it's all included. You can use it for the lifetime of your devices, hence the 10 years, which we think is a pretty reasonable assumption of a lifetime. Um, and you can use it globally. Wow. Hey, Fabian, can I borrow 10 bucks? Hey guys, welcome to Meta Toolbox, a video interview series where we try to save the world by solving one engineering challenge at a time. And the challenge we're trying to solve today is getting devices in general connected to the internet of things. And I'm joined by Fabian Kokum, who is of once. How are you doing, Fabian? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Doing pretty well. So, um, you know, this isn't a necessarily a new challenge, right? Everybody wants to connect to everything, especially wirelessly, um, to the Internet of Things to get data, optimize, you know, processes and efficiencies of their um, of, of their devices and applications. So, right now, you know, we're ten plus years into IoT. What are some of the biggest hurdles that are still being faced by developers? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. So even that we are 10 years into the game now, we still find that a lot of the base challenges are remained unsolved in a way, because you have to combine so many different things, hardware, firmware, cloud applications, the connectivity, of course, put it all into one product. That is something that many developers, especially the embedded developers, still find tricky today. Uh, and uh, we think we have something which helped them uh, to combat this challenge. Okay, so let's, let's create our imaginary product right now. You know, we've got something that's battery powered. We know that. We know mm -hmm. that we want to connect it wirelessly. And, and let's assume that we want to use co-op. All right, mm -hmm. so we've got those really super high level requirements. Yeah. What's the you know, development tool chain you know, required? What's sort of the stack going to look like to get started? Yeah, and that's where the problem begins, basically. Like many developers, they ask themselves exactly this question and they wonder, where do we begin? Where do I start, basically? And uh, to help these developers, uh, I have something prepared for today, which we believe at least is a very good starting point, which not only helps you to prototype, but also scales up into, into uh, mass manufacturing. Um, one hardware development kit which i have with me is the nordic um, nrf 9160 dev kit um, which we believe is very very good because it contains all of the things that we talked about already it has a very great developer community it has a modem on it for cellular connectivity to do narrowband iot or even ltem these kind of things um, and then also what we have is a tool set which, which helps you get started like to establish that connection from the device using co-app and integrate with a cloud service which probably does not speak, speak co-app basically because the cloud support for these protocols is not as good, good as for HTTP or even uh, MQTT. Um, so to make this fit and to marry these different worlds basically we have uh, something that I would like to show you today. Great. Do you want to show us a little bit more about what you're uh, going to be demonstrating? Of course. Yeah, this is why I'm here, right? Yeah. <laughs> just to visualize that just a little bit again. So if you have the device that you're building on the left side, right, you want to have your firmware, of course, your application firmware, your business logic that is very special for your use case. And then you have your cloud system at the right side, like AWS, Azure, or whatever it is that you're using. And everything in between, which you find here, is that boilerplate that I'm talking about. That is generic IoT logic, which is the same for every application, really. Right. So why would you have to build that again? Like, we can do that for you, and you can just use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the idea. And uh, you will see a couple of things that I, that I uh, mentioned. Uh, of course, you will see the data protocols, which are rather optimized for the device. And then you also have these other protocols, such as HTTP or MQTT, which AWS uses internally. And what we can do is at the very minimum translate these protocols from A to B. And for that, we have an SDK, as I mentioned, it's, it's open source and um, that we also um, enhanced or polished in a way to be compatible with the dev kit that I am holding here. So this is the rough idea, the, the rough overview. The blueprint, which I just mentioned, is um, yeah, for Zephyr, which is the operating system on, on, on this dev kit. And you can just take this repository, um, clone it, open it up in visual code, 
um, compile it and, and, and off you go basically. And this is what I did already. Um, I've got my VS code here. And the only thing that I did add to this project is this piece of code because we want to send data, right? Mm -hmm. So this uh, piece of code here does something very, very simple. Um, it's written in C and it's a counter basically. Right, it's a JSON object. It's a counter. It counts up. Um, it sends this piece of payload via CoAP, and that's it. Well, that's great. Well, is there a way that we're going to be able to visualize that today, Fabian? So we know this isn't some vaporware. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so typically, what you would have to do is compile this piece of code and this um, uh, this this blueprint, of course, um, because that can take some time, especially on the machine that I have with me. Uh, I did that before already. Okay? okay. So the idea basically is not to wait very long here. It's just like to press this build button, then to press this flash button. Then it takes the firmware, puts it onto the device, and since the SIM card is in here as well, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's inserted oh, yeah. here already, as I, as I told you. Um, it's a fully functioning prototype, really. And I will press the reset button and hop over to the once portal, which you would also use uh, as a customer from ours. And I am here within the once OS section because there's one thing that we need to do still, and that is to enable the co op protocol. And this is really, really straightforward as well. I'm going onto the device integrator menu option here. It loads up for a little while. I just go to new integration. I have these three options, which we talked about. We have co op here, and we just say enable and use this protocol, and that's it. You, of course, have all of these secure options uh, as well that just runs in the background. It comes with the um, blueprint, actually, so I'm not going to spend more time on that today. If you're interested, you can read up all about it. Um, and this is basically everything that you have to do. And because the firmware is already running in the background as we speak, we can now go into another tool, which is called Device Inspector. And that one shows you all of the data that is being translated from A to B, basically. I will just go in here. And after a little while, you will see that some message did arrive, in fact, just a couple of seconds ago. And since it's Base64 encoded, in, six, in, in this case, I will just go over into this Base66 decoder, and you will see the counter has already counted to four. So this is it. Wow. And since this is just one half of it, right? You can get the idea probably that we can also connect it now to any cloud really, for which we would then go not to the device integrator because we integrated the device already. We can go to the cloud integrator and then say new integration in this piece as well. And as you can imagine, I don't think I have to demo this part. Uh, you can either use a webhook to just forward it to any cloud you would want um, or natively into AWS uh, IoT core. This is pretty impressive, Fabian. So impressive that I'm not I'm not sure I actually believe it. And in just a couple of minutes there, um, we went from a dev kit sitting on your desk there to communicating with the cloud. Um, when things are that easy and things are that fast, I start to get worried that we're sacrificing something somewhere else. Like there may be abstraction layers or or something that they could bloat code. And especially when we're trying to develop a battery powered device here, you know, running co-op that's sort of a non-starter. So what are we giving up to get all of this flexibility and easy use? Nothing, I would argue, because like not only Nordic, they have done their share of energy optimizations, but also with CoAP, it's really optimized for these constraint devices. And actually we run an experiment about that. In that experiment, we compared CoAP against MQTT in a cellular scenario using narrowband IoT. And actually just by using another protocol, we were using 40% or up to 40% less energy, which wow. is insane. Yeah. Uh, and then also we have this tool which is built on top of everything else, which is called Energy Saver, also part of, of OneSOS and our platform, which compresses the data payload before sending it over the radio to once OS, which in our experiment also made up to 10% uh, on top. Um, so overall, you could um, save half the energy that you would be using um, with MQTT 
uh, in that scenario, which is like it, it unlocks entire new business and use cases. Yeah, definitely. Like going back to the beginning of the conversation, I mean, these are the things that when you're an embedded developer, when you're making a constrained device, can make or break a design, they can make or break a product. So that's that's fantastic. Is this, I mean, you mentioned, you know, some of the capabilities are available from Nordic and then this energy saver, this is a once product and feature, right? This this is not this is not from somebody else. Um, so we do offer it, but it's all based on open standards, right? So everything that we do follows this, this openness philosophy um, and also the energy saver. We are using BCL, binary conversion language. Um, so you could use either our function, which is open source and the CSDK and just grab it to, to, to be faster, or you could choose it to build on your own even. So it, it's up to you. The choices are yours. I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty uh, comprehensive. And, and I think it's important to, to point out that idea that, you know, instead of being sort of restrictive, we're now talking about enabling, you know, the, the cost is sort of negligible. Um, you know, you, you've got 10 bucks for 10 years, you get the SIM card, and then you get access to this platform. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have availability, you have the availability of all these features, which allow you to potentially create new applications on top of it. And, you know, all this, all this code, as you mentioned, is open source, right? So, I mean, it's, it's really positioned to, to drive the industry forward and, and, and help the, the issue of scale, I think. Absolutely, yes. So as you mentioned, all of the embedded code is uh, open source. You can just take it if you need to. Otherwise, you can use the industry standards, implement them on your own. We have all of these cloud services. They are included in the price tag. So no surprises. It's just there. You pay it once and then off you go for the rest of your lifetime of the device. It's just like that. And this is exactly why we do it, right? To enable other people to be successful, right? Because we believe actually that connectivity should be as simple as electricity, right? It should be a right for everyone to just use it. And if you make it complicated and really make it um, hard to use, then you will never reach the goal um, of enabling other people. So we reduce it, make it as simple as possible and give it away to you. Well, I'm almost positive that uh, the members of uh, the Embedded Computing Design and Embedded Toolbox community are going to be really interested and want to go to find out more. So Fabian, mm -hmm. if people want to find out more about ONCE and the, the ONCE OS and the SDK here that we've talked about today, as well as where they can get some, their hands on some of these SIM cards, where should they go? It's simple. It's ONCE.com. Uh, we have not only our website, but also a developer hub, which has all of the documentation, the entire API is there, nothing is hidden, everything is public. So if you're interested, uh, just check it out and see if it suits your requirements. That's great. Well, hopefully we'll see you in the cloud, right, Fabian? <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you. <laughs>